Hello, not again. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We are entering in the final, final bit of Act 2. Today we're gonna go for the Vaal Oversol. Yep. And with, I suspect we might be able to do the crematorium as well in Act, uh, Act 3. Just to get that out of the way. So I looked into a bit deeper into what I talked about the last episode. About just generating additional endurance and frenzy charges using Enduring Cry Blood Rage. So I just uh, put both of the skills into a spare weapon in my offhand, also known as the weapon switch. So I will need to make a couple of changes. So my golem and my war chief a totem are on the same a set of links. They are sharing the increased physical damage bonus. They are sharing the fortify. So they actually have useful links. So it's not a, a matter of just simply taking out the, the links. It, it will actually be a trade-off since my golem will be a lot less tanky if I take out the fortify and of course it will be weaker if I take out the damage as well and I have to take out both if I want to put in the blood rage and the enduring crime. Also it took me about 40 chromes to get this rolled into four reds so I'm not just gonna uh, arbitrarily <laughs> roll that into a triple red plus one green because if I want to get it back to red I need to spend another whole bunch of chromes again afterwards so I'll just just in between episodes somewhere once I got the skills skills leveled a little bit I'll just uh, switch into a temporary set of gloves just something from my stash and just see how it works out if it is worth the sacrifice or not Let's see, we gain extra items, nothing really bad happens to me. Ice Nova, so let's just uh, start at the edge here. Exactly. Put the totem slightly forward, put ourselves slightly forward. Blood Rage and Durin Cry, they'll be leveling quite a bit. Since they, they were both just level 1s that I uh, had in my, uh, in my stash. Actually now considering it might be more useful to just uh, grab something from a vendor. Because then they'll probably start closer to level 8. But we'll see. As I said, that's just... Uh, for now it's an experiment that, that I'll be doing. So that's like there's a rush. Oh, it would be nice to have more charges or more consistent charges. That's probably a better way to, uh, to use here. Just want to have it more consistent. Alternatively, I could take out Molten Shell and replace that with uh, Blood Rage. Because then it will benefit from the increased duration that is in the same set of links. It will just trigger every once in a while when I take enough damage. Speaking of... I can probably increase the level of the Cosmo damage taken because... I had it set to 725 when I was in my about 2300, so we can increase it one more time now. But you're along with the linked skills. So now it triggers every 800, so that's going to be 2400, so we could probably put bump it to level 6. And then the other ones are going to be nice. Oh, Molten Shell actually is not going to trigger, I overleveled it. Yay for that. Because it's uh, Molten Shell, it increases by 4 levels whenever you boom bump it. Uh, the level requirement goes up by 4. While the other skills only go up by 2. So it, it's on a different timer, which is slightly annoying. But, well, since we want to level the other skills twice, yeah, it's going to be okay. We'll uh, eventually make up for it. 
So for now we can actually just trigger it manually. Wahahaha. Because of course that's the thing you get if you can't trigger it via cast whenever you can, you can trigger it again by it. And it will benefit from the linked increase duration and all that good stuff. So it will last quite a bit. 16 seconds. Ooh. Ah, that looks interesting. Boom. What is the damage? 500 to 800. Ah, we gain a little bit of bonus damage if we haven't killed recently. From the some bonus we get from our boots. I think it's uh, an interesting bonus to have when boss fights. Especially boss fights without add-ons. Because you just get a little bit extra damage that's just going to be active for the remainder of the boss fight. Um, no, if you kill the boss it just drops off again. If it has a boss with add-ons then... Well, the moment you kill an add-on you lose the damage. But then you gain the benefit of flasks and... All kinds of other good stuff. So I think it's an interesting trade-off. Another set of staircase. Just something. There is a totem in there that needs to die. Big skeleton. So situations like this, it would be nice to control how many endurance charges you uh, you gain and endurance cry definitely helpful for that so if i put blood rage on the auto cast with the cast when damage taken setup then that means all i have to do is just put endurance cry in and i can just take out the increased physical uh, damage from a dominion link they will keep their fortify but they'll just lose the other thing They'll just lose a bit of damage. And that one. Okay. Let's see if we came from there. So we go up here. Up oh, there. Fine. Roughly this direction. Ah. Not self. Don't click the staircase. Up there, jumping out of their immortality radius. That's also <laughs> interesting because it's all this totem. So let's just do it. Got a totem down there. Put a totem mine next to it. That will just fix it. And there it is the final staircase. Boss fight imminent. And I would just wanted to, yeah, the immortal call duration on the buff actually shows the effective n number it will have accounting for endurance charges. That's pretty cool. So you don't need to do math in your head, just get the maximum number of charges and it will just tell you how long it lasts. Uh, okay. I mean, 300 additional armor translates to. Well, quite a bit more in practice. Yes, 32%. Yeah, we go in almost 800 armor from the 300 from this. That's uh, what armor bonuses do for you. Okay. Keep just summoning the totem, then we jump on top. And it jumps out, sure. Okay. You just keep frosting, I don't mind. Is that gonna be a slam? That's gonna be a slam. No, it's gonna be summons, cool. If you summon stuff, I don't truly care. If it gets too close, it just gets slammed by the totem. And if they're too far, then we'll just shrug it off. And that was it. Fall over so. So, I... 
I felt completely confident during this fight. The, I, I, not even sure my health bar actually moved. The energy shield fell off, that, that's, that's for sure. But the health bar never really moved in any interesting way. Uh, Val thing was just summoning all the time. He didn't really use his laser beam, didn't use his melee slam attack. Uh, no? Yes. And that was that. Might as well just empty our pockets quickly, then we can just instantly move on. So everybody's happy again. Which is good. We we strive for a happier break last. That's gonna be uh that's uh, that's our goal in life, just make everybody happy. Well, with the exception of the things that try to murder us, of course. They don't get to be happy. What rage, enduring cry. Leveling up a low level gem to a semi decent level goes pretty quickly. And th those last couple of levels usually take the longest. For example, if you have a level 70 character and you're. Oh, it's easy to get the gems to about level 50. Well, after that, you need to put in some serious effort in order to increase the, the level of, of gems. So they will actually be level relevant. And that, that's especially with spells that inherently scale their damage. There you really notice that you're using lower level skills. Uh, most melee attacks, because their damage just scales with your weapon, adding more levels just increases the multiplier slightly so it's not a big deal uh, difference between a level 10 and a level 20 gem uh, melee attack not as big as for a spell especially not on, on damage output okay well plenty of time to look for the crematorium do the trial and face down piety so let's uh, get started on that. There's no p point in going to town right now. We are properly geared, there's no reason to go shopping there. We already emptied our pockets. So town is slightly less relevant. No difficulties, it is of course slightly more important to go to town. But here, not really. Ooh, ah, our Frenzy charges expired. Okay. These queens with their the little bugger add-ons are pretty useful for generating charges because there's just way too many bodies to kill. Actually maxed out on uh, endurance charges for a change. And fancy charges are also max now. Nice. It is possible. Oh yeah. And then we lose more. Again. It's just uh, especially the the. Increase in damage output is something I can definitely appreciate. And the attack speed, you know, just the fast sweeps, are nice to have. Annoying to lose. Ooh, damn change went up. The blood rage is gonna be useful. We have a fair amount of uh, percentage based life uh, regen on this build. So, oh, as, as you know, or might not, Blood Rage, it has a 4% life degen as physical damage uh, that you will suffer while it's in effect. So having fixed life regen on your build helps you uh, just compensate for that. In return, it makes you attack faster, it gives you frenzy charges on kill, 
it gives you 1.5% of your physical damage as life leech, so we do gain more leech from it, so that that actually just by itself makes it really valuable. The interesting bit is that the endurance charges generate faster and more consistently it seems than our frenzy charges. Could have to do with the... because one is main hand, one is off hand. It could be that we're just more consistently killing them with one hand versus the other. So I'm just consciously trying to not summon my, uh, my totem for now until we really, really need it, just to see if it makes an impact or if it really doesn't make an impact. I think increasing the charge duration with another two skill point is definitely going to be useful. Now pushing them from almost 12 seconds to 13 and a half seconds. It's, it's, it's nice. You will defeat a hate beat while wearing black gleam. Well, actually, I'm not. I don't have a black gleam. Black gleam is a, an arrow, uh, an, a, a quiver for uh, if you're using a, a bow. I'm not using a bow, and nor do I have that unique. So this is a prophecy that will remain unfulfilled. Oh, I cast a totem. Shouldn't have. Fuck you, so nice. And no cre kill credit whatsoever. Because they exploded. So, we're looking both for the way to piety as well as to the labyrinth uh, to the trial we'll see what we encounter first see a lever that means we are near to the labyrinth trial something so close yet so far let's see if we can uh, home in on it Yay, found it. Hey, hey Pete, how are you doing today? And Crimson Shuffle. Let's take out your buddy first. And then you. Well. Of course we have our Sofa Flask. That I just realized is a perfect offset as well for Blood Rage. Because it gives you 4% a life regen from the uh, from the aura or from the uh, holy effect. Consecrated ground, that's the one I was looking for. Look at this, we're just sustaining ourselves in the burning ground. Okay. When the enemies run out, you run out. That's that's how it goes with a sustained tank. Standing in a constant source of damage. Um, there. Actually had to hit a flask there. These are, of course, the kinds of things that technically you shouldn't be doing. Can't recommend that you do it at home. But that's a, a player that just wants to get through a trial quickly. You will end up doing it anyway. Despite the wisdom of such decisions. Okay, another door here. Another door. Especially you know, for us, as long as we have enemies around, we can just keep ourselves alive by just leeching. Hmm. I suspect we'll have to go back all the way to the beginning. Ah, oh, here. And that is number four. Portal, portal. Oh no, it's just next to the entrance. How convenient. I don't remember running a layout like that before. But, so we go through here and then just cross over and see if we can find anything on, on this side. The 
to be a piety somewhere nearby. I wonder if our damage is still at a level where we can get piety to zero health, effectively killing her while she is teleporting away. I always find that to be a re relatively good way of checking your damage output. If you don't, if you can't manage that uh, while you could on a previous difficulty level, then you know you have effectively lost damage compared to the to the game. Of course, it did you. It, yeah, having the totem out does help there. Enough of this. Yeah, we're getting here. Boom. We got her down to zero. Barely, but we did get her there. So I think we're doing good. We're doing still good. And we are in town. Hello, Baramoa. What do you have for us today? Butcher axe. Yeah, let's go for that. Seems the most relevant for us. Navali, you actually have a proper quest. What? Okay, sure. Oh, um, we need to seal this one. Hate Pete while wearing black gleam. Since we're not using it. So, Hello. seek prophecy. Give me something useful. Ooh. Encounter corrupted animals in a dried lake and slay them. Well, we already have a. There's a, a challenge. The next one on the list clear, merciless, dried lake. So, we need to do a full clear. So if you have a prophecy that will tell us to kill specific things, there's a very nice, nice synergy there. Yeah, we keep the bracelet. No, actually we give it to Clarissa. We get the keys. And then that is it for this episode. We have arrived in Act 3. We've already completed the first quest first trial even as well so now all that's left is the not the crematorium but the catacombs a bit further ahead then we have cleared all the trials we are technically at the level where we could do the labyrinth because we are no we're level 66 that's higher than the labyrinth but it's not wise to do it at this point in time so we're just gonna see just how fast we can get through Act 3. We'll probably uh, just see where our life is at. It would be nice to push our life slightly closer towards 3000 um, before the Piety and Dominus fights. But on the other hand, we're doing pretty good in terms of defenses so far. So if not, then it uh, might not be too much of an issue. But anyway, I'm just gonna stop talking. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.